Hello everyone, welcome to this Sims 3 Creator World video. So today we're here in Plymouth Isle on episode, what is this, 24. So today I am building the library and an arcade. So I know I've already made a library for, Plym for Plymouth Isle uh, back on episode, I think, 17. So yeah, not too long ago and I decided to scrap it and build a different one. So what I did before essentially was I built the art gallery uh, in episode 16, and uh, that was originally where this lot is right now. So the way I had it before was this lot and the one next to it were just one big lot, and that was lot number 30. So uh, that's where I built the art gallery originally, and then I made a copy of it to make the library, and I put that on the other side of City Hall. So they were essentially from the outside the same building, and both buildings were way too large, and they were pretty ugly, and I, I just wasn't, I just wasn't a huge fan of how they turned out, like, after taking some time to reflect on the results. Uh, you know, it just, it was just not great. So I decided to move the, uh, uh, art gallery to the other side, renovate it, which I already did, that was episode 19, and now I'm here in episode 24 building a new library that is entirely unique and is not based off the art gallery in any way, and the way it turns out I think is really great and it's a lot better than the other library I built, so I'm much, much happier with this one, and yeah, so anyway, as I said, this is lot 30, uh, the lot next door is now 30.5 because you know, I didn't want to renumber all the lots in the world to accommodate that lot being 31. So yeah, this is lot 30 here. And yeah, so essentially you can download this lot. There's a link in the description and you can build, not build, well, you can build, but you can also place uh, it down on lot 30. So I also, in this episode, build an arcade down on the wharf. So we begin the wharf uh, construction and get the first building done. So that'll be pretty exciting. But yeah, so essentially what I'm doing here uh, at the moment is making a roof for the library that is a little different than what I would normally do. So I wanted to have, <clears throat> wow, there goes my voice already, only two minutes in. Um, I wanted to have, um, uh, I wanted to have a mansard roof, but I, I just, you know, it just wouldn't work because of the limit on the amount of levels you can build. So I've already used my five levels because of the foundation, then I have three floors above ground, and then I have um, the, the freeze on top, so it's already five. So I had to improvise here. So what I ended up doing is use constrained floor elevation to put this kind of uh, slant to the floor there along the edge, and so it has a flat roof, and then this kind of uh, sharp uh, kind of um, slant there before it goes to the very edge so or, or you know kind of slopes down and then I kind of put some actual pieces of roofing there to kind of uh, you know enhance those areas um, you know that are kind of the main focal points on the outside but yeah essentially uh, this is a pretty much no roofing there's very little roofing on this act actually on this building so I thought that was kind of interesting and here I'm just working out where the entrance is going to go because this is kind of a corner lot uh, I wanted to, you know, have an entrance that faces both ways. And I also put some parking uh, on one side of the entrance. You can see there's a parking spot kind of already there. And, oh, there's more now. But anyway, the uh, inside of this library uh, ends up being quite nice. It's really interesting. And I feel like the main issue I had with the previous library I built was not only that it was just a copy of the art gallery, but also that it was just really too big. So this one, even though it's it's also three stories, it's it's like half the width, uh, or it's like less than half that uh, of what the other building was. So you know, it's it's a lot more reasonably sized, and it has um, it has like one main kind of room in it, like one main reading room, and there's a couple other uh, smaller rooms uh, as well, and then there's also a computer uh, kind of room. So, you know, there's like really four main spaces in this library, and there's also like the front desk area, of course, but yeah, so it's not, you know, absurd. And I also didn't use the entirety of the third floor. The third floor actually is half just open space for the main reading room, and then the other half has some stuff on it, but yeah, it's, it's just much better scale-wise. Uh, 
But anyway, here you can see on the outside, the kind of the main feature of the building is kind of like these columns uh, that kind of go around these areas here where the main reading room is and kind of these two-story windows. Well, they would be if I could find windows that actually um, went to the very top of the wall. Kind of annoyingly, there aren't really any good one or three wide windows that go all the way up to the top of the wall that aren't like ultra modern. There's like a good one from Supernatural that's two blocks wide, but my I need a three block wide window. So it's it's okay, it's a little gap there between the bottom windows and the top windows, which I didn't really want because it is, it is like a two story ceiling in there, but it's fine. Uh, but anyway, uh, what I was originally gonna do for this video is actually build this uh, library and then on the wharf I was gonna build um, what I was going to call the Plymouth Isle Historical Society. And it was essentially just going to be like another art gallery, just a much, much smaller one. And, you know, it'd have like some, you know, like some like places to do research or whatever, I guess, um, you know, it, theoretically, of course, but not, it would, it would kind of be like a part library, part art gallery sort of, sort of situation. But, uh, you know, I was thinking about what to do for the wharf. And also I got some good comment suggestions too on the last episode. So I ended up selling on doing an arcade on the wharf instead of this historical society because it's really just kind of useless in game. Uh, so I ended up naming this lot the Library and Historical Society. So you know, I imagine that maybe this this library has like some archives that are just like especially about the history of the island, and you know, maybe people do research here. I don't know. I just kind of wanted to keep that idea alive, even though it's really affects the way the building is in in no way at all but you know whatever it was just just a thought i suppose but yeah and uh in the end i you know think the arcade was really a good choice it's really cool and of course we'll be getting that at the second half of the video i'm also i think pretty much decided on what i'm going to put on the wharf i think that you know uh just some you know a little bit more unusual kind of community lots that aren't in most worlds, you know, the ones that came with different expansion packs would be kind of a good move for that. Because I didn't really want, I was originally just going to make more stores there, like using the um, the uh, set that from the store, the sellers, Savvy Sellers collections uh, from the store. But, you know, the thing about those is while if you have the set, they're functional, it's still pretty boring, you know, unless you own a store. But I feel like, you know, you don't need that many of them. So what I've decided to do is kind of go with different uh, lots from expansion. So of course, the arcade is from is from uh, University Life. And I'm also gonna do a coffee shop, which uh, is technically, the lot type is technically Java Hut. Uh, and that's from also from uh, University Life. Uh, there is, like when I was looking at like the different lot types, there is a coffee house lot type. But I discovered that's actually a type of rabbit hole from Showtime, and it's really just used for performance. Like, I looked at the lot, the coffee house lot in Starlight Shores, and it was just a performance, it was just a rabbit hole with a stage out front. So I was like, well, that's not particularly helpful. So, uh, yeah, I went with Java Hut as the lot type, but I'm going to call it a coffee shop. And it's a nice little, like, coffee bar you can get uh, from the ambition, not ambitions, from the University Life Pack. So it actually functions as a coffee shop. So that'd be pretty cool. And I'm also probably going to do some sort of bar. There's, like, a lot of different options. When I was looking through, like, the lot types, like, the that came with Late Night, and there's, like, a lot of different varieties that you can go with so i'll probably pick one of them uh so and because it's also and i've been planning this for a while is also making kind of like some sort of bar over by the industrial area and kind of like a converted warehouse sort of thing and that would be the only bar in the world but now that i've discovered that there's so many different types of bars or hangouts or whatever they like to call them uh i can make you know a different kind on the wharf as well and then you know there's i could do either i guess like an elixir shop because there's four lots there so i was thinking like the elixir consignment store from supernatural which is kind of random especially since this is not really a world meant for like supernatural related things but you know that could work or the or a pet shop could work i think both are cons kind of consignment story kind of like consignment store ish uh or just their varieties of a consignment store, which I will be doing a normal consignment store, of course. So, but anyway, those were the kind of ideas I was having. Someone suggested in the last episode to do a dog park. So I think I'm gonna do a dog park um, kind of near the town center next to the, um, where, I, where I'm gonna build the consignment store. It's kind of across the street from the spa. Uh, so yeah, but anyway, that's kind of like the thought process that stemmed from 
doing this video because I was like, well, what's next? So that's kind of what I'm thinking of. I mean, that won't necessarily be like in the next episode, but eventually that's what I'm going to be getting around to. But anyway, um, yeah, so I think that that'll be pretty cool. So this uh, is the kind of uh, front desk area of the library that I'm working on right here. And I'm also kind of just doing some storage, uh, like some book storage, I guess, in the back. So I suppose, you know, this could be just for extra books that aren't super common, or like when people return their books, they just get them put here until they're shelved again, or, you know, things like that. If you, you know, request a book like after someone else returns it, they'll keep it there for you, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's what I kind of have there behind the front desk. And then you can see, well, you saw briefly there the main, um, kind of uh, reading room of the library with a two-story ceiling, which is on the second floor. And then down here on the first floor is going to be the computer room. So, you know, I guess I imagine that like Sims in school, like uh, would come here and like, they could do research or whatever. I feel like that's a very outdated kind of idea, but you know, it's, you know, it, it, it's nice. It's a quaint idea, I suppose. But anyway, here I'm uh, just choosing a floor, uh, kind of going for this parquet floor. I also put in the same kind of details that I've been putting in a lot of my builds recently on the floor with the with the wood. Uh, but, you know, I imagine this is an old building, of course, you know, the whole idea of this being kind of a New England town is that there's a lot of history. So, you know, I imagine this being kind of an old uh, building that, I mean, it could have been a library from the beginning, who knows, but it doesn't really look like a house. So I suppose it kind of works as kind of being a library. Uh, but yeah, it's quite cool. But here you can see I'm doing the floor. So like I said, I was going to put the floor in. So there's the fancy flooring. I'm just moving those bookshelves around so they're kind of like centered there. I also used these lights that I think are from the Now and Then Century Manor set. Uh, and they kind of have these chains. So you can put the chandelier actually on the lower level when you have like a two-story ceiling and then use these chains uh, to like look like it's holding the light up, which I did in this. I actually do that quite often when I have these two-story ceilings because you can use the chains with any light and it makes it look a lot more realistic than having the chandelier like for some reason all the way up at the very top where it doesn't shine light actually onto the correct floor so that's just a good little solution there but anyway here i'm just putting some random trees out front uh, which i'm going to come back to the landscaping near the end though but you know i for some reason like to put trees out early on anyway here i'm just adjusting these bookshelves i'll actually adjust them again later i think but yeah, just adjusting those bookshelves so they're kind of like joined together and putting in some lighting here around the front desk. So, you know, uh, it looks nice. And now that I think about it, I guess I could have put a computer at the front desk because they have those at libraries, but I forgot. So yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So anyway, you know, it's, it's useless. It's just for show anyway. The front desk in these library uh, community lots really do nothing. But anyway putting some more lighting in in here in the kind of back area. And uh, I think I'm gonna do some recoloring here. I was gonna go for metal bookshelves, and I was like, no, that's kind of bad looking. So I just made them wooden, uh, just a different color than the other bookshelves, just so, you know, there's kind of a distinction there, I guess. But yeah, just adjusting the lighting there. The lighting was kind of weird on the bookshelves, it's a little annoying, but uh, this is the computer room. So this is where, I guess, you can do research or just use these kind of public computers. So just putting those in here, I think that there's seven of them. Wait, no, it's five, six, yeah, there's seven of them. So your Sims can uh, go and use those computers if they want, if they don't have any at home or whatever. And here I'm just choosing the colors for these bookshelves. Uh, so that's the main reading room there. There's a couple other ones as well, uh, of course, and uh, just recoloring all these desks down here on the first floor as well. So they all kind of... Uh, you know, match the general theme, I suppose, of the library, and getting in some lights there as well, and uh, some lights just throughout the building, uh, which is good, good to have. I also expanded this reading room up here on the third floor, because it's like there's really no point in having this random hallway that just goes nowhere, so I uh, tweaked that, but yeah, and also the entrance to the building has kind of this nice, um, you know, two-story uh, open kind of atrium vibe to it. It's very nice uh, with the hanging chandelier. So I think that looks pretty grand and fancy. And the first floor also has like this nice kind of um, molding on the walls as well, at least in the main areas, like the back area doesn't have it because it wouldn't really make sense. But, you know, I, was, I wanted it to be kind of a pretty classy building. I thought that it would look nice, you know, where like people would come and do research and stuff. You know, I thought it, it should look kind of like a fancy older building. But anyway, uh, just doing some more things here, just some things and stuff. 
Uh, I think we'll get around to some more furnishing soon, but for now I'm just putting in some curtains in this room here. Um, you know, some curtains. Some of the rooms have curtains, some don't. It just depends. But yeah, switching out those bookshelves there so I can actually fit the curtains in. And, uh, you know, always good to prioritize curtains over bookshelves in a library. Very important. Uh, so anyway, here, just putting just, I put a lot of these little uh, kind of like pad of paper with like a cup of pens and pencils. I put that object on like everywhere in this building. So, you know, eh, whatever. Imagine people taking notes. And here I'm just recoloring some of these reading rooms so they just kind of have a bit of character. And here I'm just adjusting these bookshelves so they don't have weird gaps between them. And yeah, so I think we're gonna do the main reading room here. So, you know, I just have a couple tables in the center there. I'm gonna have, uh, you know, some chairs for them, obviously, and a little, uh, you know, pad of paper objects on them as well. So, you know, people can pull out books and they can read them here, I suppose, take some notes if they want to. Um, and I also am going to have some, just some couches, so I was going to do some more tables, but I thought, yeah, no, we won't do that. We'll make this a fancy library, you know, fancier than your ordinary library, and we'll put in these, uh, couches, uh, around the room, these very nice couches, and, uh, I also put in some side tables and lamps and stuff, so, you know, it ends up looking, like, really quite grand, uh, actually, especially, you'll see it in the screenshots, of course, uh, which will be at the end of this episode, so you know, you know, it'll it'll look pretty cool. But anyway, putting in these, some side tables here and some lamps on those side tables, and I also put in a nice rug as well, and just you know some plants, just a bunch of details and things, just to make it uh, look pretty fancy schmancy. Because I wanted this to be a pretty classy library, and it's also quite a bit more detailed than the previous library I built was. So you know, it's it's nicer, definitely definitely an improvement. And yeah, so just doing the rug there and some more rugs just down the hallways here because, you know, why not? And what else? What else? What is next? I guess this room here. So I'm going to do the reading room here on the second floor. So this is a smaller one. It's kind of off of the main reading room. So it just has some tables and chairs in it, some bookshelves. And uh, I think this like little statue bust thing from University Life that was just like, you know, interesting, I suppose. You can probably go buy yourself one of those at the antique store. I actually know for a fact that your Sims can do that because I put that object in the antique store from last episode. But anyways, putting some artwork in and also some more plants and stuff. Just a little, just little things here and there to make it nice and detailed. Also putting some chairs in the hallway here just so the corner there just isn't empty. And yeah, so I think uh, we would be pretty much it for the second floor here. So we're going to move on now to the third floor, which isn't quite as big because, um, well, we're putting some columns in first, but isn't quite as big because, you know, it has that large open area for the uh, main reading room there. But the hallway up here kind of has some nice seating in it as well. So there's a couple couches here. It's so kind of like a nice little sitting area there. So, you know, Sims can, uh, you know, sit back and read a book. There's also some chairs in this kind of main uh, turret, not really a turret, but kind of like tower area, so that was pretty nice too. And uh, of course the main thing up here is just this, uh, oh, well, we're doing curtains, but the main thing up there is that large reading room, which is right here, so this is the third reading room, and I'm going to actually split it down the middle with some bookshelves, so yeah, it'll be a little bit more separated here, but that way I can fit in a few more bookshelves. And I kind of split it up into kind of like a ma main uh, like sitting area and then kind of like this research area with some more tables and chairs. And there's like just some seats on that side. So this looks pretty nice. And uh, changing the colors of the rugs here. So just getting that stuff done. And yeah, so some more flowers and stuff and just a few more details around the place. I think a bit of art on the wall, yep. And a plant in the corner, because why not? Anyway, I think that's pretty much it for the interior here of the library, uh, except for the bathrooms. I forgot about those, but yeah, so we're going to do the bathrooms at some point, uh, so you know, don't worry about that. So we're going to get in there and do that soon-ish at some point, maybe, doing the plants there. Here we go. So yeah, the bathrooms are identical. They're just two just generic bathrooms here. Um, so they just have normal doors, and then they don't have the gender-specific specific doors. Wow, I can't speak. Uh, so they're basically just the same thing here. Anyone can use either one because they're just one person bathrooms. So yep. And yeah, so there you go. And there's also uh, some blinds in the windows there for some privacy. But anyway, here I'm just recoloring kind of the areas your sims can't go black and using, uh, just putting in some stone there for the uh, kind of front porch areas. Um, 
and these kind of like extra little areas here and yeah also some lighting as well just to put on there um what else what else more lighting a lot of outdoor lighting of course i'm going to do some of the landscaping soon or actually pretty much all the landscaping of course because we're almost done here with this building so yeah just uh, some simple landscaping nothing too over the top here um you know just some some of the general flowers and bushes i've been using elsewhere in the world as well and uh, of course this lot kind of goes right next to city hall here so it's like a nice little pathway that kind of runs between this lot and city hall so your sims can kind of walk all around this lot as well but yeah anyway putting in uh, some bushes some flowers little things like that a few rocks and i also put a tree kind of like this nice little um central area there with a the tree and i put some benches around it i also found this nice sculpture as well that kind of looks historical it shows like a few people like in a boat um like i think one with a telescope or something i guess we'll see in a second once i get it out but yeah it's kind of interesting it you know it looks like a historical thing you know maybe it represents like the founders i think it's actually titled the founding crew and i think it came with barnacle bay it, i mean i don't know for sure but it looks like it would have come with barnacle bay so you know I think that's kind of fitting uh, to have in this world. So I put it right there, front and center outside the library. And yeah, so I think just recoloring these stairs here, I'm gonna put just a few more things out, I think some benches. So yeah, here we go with the benches. So I'm just getting those in. Uh, so your sims can kind of sit there and relax if they want to. I kind of put them around that main tree area as well. And uh, also went along the pathway there. But now we're just gonna do some terrain paint here, just some dirt terrain paint to kind of finish it all off and uh yeah so i think pretty soon we're going to be moving on to the arcade so the arcade uh, of course is going to be by the wharf and yeah so i'm just right now we're just gonna i think put some cars in though before we move on actually so uh, yeah there's a couple cars that's nice and what else what am i doing here oh yeah the ceiling that's right uh i put like this a kind of nice ceiling detail in as well so yeah i think that's pretty much it though so oh air conditioners wow i'm like really bad at, at figuring out when this is going to switch over okay there we go so now we're here at the wharf and this is the first lot of the uh, on the wharf the inaugural wharf lot and uh yeah it's the arcade so i designed it to kind of look like two um individual buildings but they were like you know at some point they were bought by the same person and then like converted into this you know one arcade i was kind of inspired by a lot of different things for this build so i was looking first at um university or the sims university as i suppose it's called from university life so i was looking at the world there and kind of like what the community lots there looked like because of course that's the only world in the game that has um a pre-built uh, arcade and yeah it was um kind of like a combination of like it looked like three different buildings or two different buildings and like all the different you know lots in that world like the coffee hut or the java hut as it's called you know and like the different hangouts they all look like a bunch of different buildings from the outside uh but then on the inside it was just one large building so and they kind of like looked like it was bought at some point you know all by the same person and like they converted it to be like one you know single uh place but from the outside, the look was really cool because it looked like a bunch, like a whole, you know, strip of different stores. And then I was also looking at the uh, wharf at um, uh, at Nantucket or in Nantucket on Google Maps, well, Google Street View specifically, so I can get kind of get a look at what you know an actual New England wharf looks like. And you know, it was very narrow. Uh, there was no like grass or anything because you know it's kind of over the water. Uh, of course, I can't really make this narrower than the road, uh, so, you know, I um, built the building, though, very close to the edge of the lot, because I wanted it to look like, you know, it's right, it's not, it's not like a sidewalk, you know, it's kind of like right there, um, and I also don't have any grass on the lot in the end, and of course, you know, the road itself is not really paved, it's more like, kind of like a tile, which, uh, you know, the wharf, at least I was looking at in Nantucket, was brick, but you know, this is pretty close. It doesn't have to be exact, obviously, but yeah, I thought that it would be kind of cool to emulate that. The buildings, uh, at least in Nantucket, are very low and small. So like the design of this, well, the design actually of the building on the corner here, like the one that's in the corner is more like what you'd see in Nantucket. The one um, with the awning right now uh, ends up looking kind of more like what you'd see like in Europe. 
um, kind of, or like, I think more specifically, like, not only Amsterdam, but Sweden, maybe? I don't know, I, I was looking just like at pictures of wharf buildings, so I wasn't entirely sure where it was from, but I know it was somewhere in Europe. And that's kind of where I got the inspiration for the shape of it, kind of just like that one large A-frame roof. It's not really an A-frame, well, I guess, hmm, I don't know, it's, it's uh, or what do you call it, just a, um, ugh, not a hipped roof, it's the other kind, uh, you know, oh, gosh, I can't believe I'm like blanking on uh, it's gabled roof. I guess it's just a, a standard gable. Yeah. Okay. There you go. It's kind of a standard gabled roof. Uh, you know, very simple and but also kind of colorful. So you'll see that when we get to the colors as well. But uh, I also was not originally going to put a bowling alley in this arcade. But the one, the arcade, the pre-built arcade. Also, also look at how many freaking arcade machines are in the game as well. It's absurd. These are all unique, different arcade machines that are just in the game. It's crazy. I didn't realize there were so many. Uh, they're from various packs. There's, I think, some from Late Night, some from Supernatural, some from Showtime, some from University Life, but some from the store. But yeah, just a, a lot of them. So it was actually really great. I was worried about not having enough a variety of arcade machines, but there was plenty to fill this place up. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, with the University Life, the pre-built world or the pre-built uh, arcade had the bowling alley. So I thought, okay, fine, I'll fit the bowling alley in. And I actually was not expecting to be able to fit in the bowling alley, but I was able to. It kind of eats away at that building on the right there. Uh, but, you know, it, it's pretty cool. It's a couple different, uh, not different, well, it's a couple bowling alleys there, a couple of lanes, I guess. It's one bowling alley, but it has two lanes. And there's also, of course, on the second floor, um, besides all the arcade tables, uh, a uh, pool table and then also a foosball table so there's a good variety of things to do in this arcade and you can see here I'm using this uh, actual uh, kind of stone terrain paint that's from from Monte Vista so yeah uh, it kind of matched the road the closest so it kind of looked the most seamless but yeah I thought it was pretty cool I also found this nice neon sign uh, that I put over the door there and I also put one um, by the other door as well, but I'm going to design these buildings to actually look like uh, two separate buildings from the outside, but then on the inside, you know, it's just one kind of large space, which I think will be pretty cool. Well, I know it's pretty cool because I already did it. So yeah, anyway, you'll see how it comes along here, but uh, oh, I should have mentioned this earlier when we started this a lot. This is built on lot number 11, and like the library, there's a link in the description below, and also the lot number's also there as well. So yeah, you can download this lot. But yeah, this is lot number 11 here on the wharf. It's just the one on the corner. And yeah, here we go with the colors. So yeah, this is where I kind of got that uh, in inspiration from Google Images. So I went with this kind of desaturated, kind of worn red, uh, along just the front. So because this is New England theme, uh, and because every single building on the wharf I was looking at on Google Maps in Nantucket had these kind of uh, very light toned uh, shake or shingles on the wall, or on the walls, these wooden uh, shake walls, I thought I would use that here as well. So the whole back of this building has it, and the building next door is also entirely in that material. But just this kind of front facade here, I wanted to do something a little different. And I also put the red on the freeze level there as well, so it kind of has this kind of fun pop of color there, which I think will look pretty cool. There's also this nice outdoor staircase as well. There's, of course, an indoor staircase, but I thought the outdoor staircase would be kind of neat since there was an opportunity to put it there, but I actually did change the, uh, the walls here a little bit. I used a different... Um, a uh, different wall texture here because this one allowed me to change the colors of the corner pieces here so because I wanted them to match the windows so it kind of tied together a little bit better but anyway here I'm just putting in some windows and doors for this first building here which again it's really one big building but they look distinct from the outside and I'm also putting in a back door there and it's also going to be an, uh, an exterior door on the second floor as well uh, so yep there you go and yeah, I don't know how many of these wharf buildings will be two stories because they don't, or will be this tall because, you know, they don't need to be this tall. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't really want to do too many more of those like little apartment things that I was like doing, um, you know, near the town center, which I think work really, really well there. But uh, I don't know if I want to do that so much on the wharf. I mean, I'll probably do it at least like once, but I don't want them all to have that. So like this one doesn't. Uh, I think, you know, for some of the other lots I'm going to do here, I'll probably just put, like, storage rooms there or, like, continuations of, like, 
whatever's on the first floor. So like this arcade, of course, continues onto the second floor. And yeah, but anyway, you can see uh, the building now on the left um, now is white. So it kind of, again, goes with that New England kind of vibe. And right now I'm just uh, figuring out the doors inside there. But yeah, I think we're gonna start with the interior details now. And one of the coolest things I do with this build is the colored lighting. I don't know if that's actually gonna be there if you download it because when I, after I put it in, when I saved and I came back in the game later with my sim to take uh, screenshots, some of the colored lights reset. And then like I came back later again and they were reset again. So some of them stay colored and some of them um, change back to the general like white light, which is kind of annoying because I really like the, the different colors, you know, they're kind of fun. but. I don't know why the game keeps resetting it. It's very annoying. And I've, it's kind of like the reason I never like uh, dealt with like light intensity before as well, because of course you can change the intensity of the light just as you can change the color of it. But I find that like a lot of times it just resets it every time you leave the game and come back in. So it's just kind of more irritating than anything because you have to keep fixing it. But anyway, here I went for this room to be red and purple. And then the main room here with the bowling alley, I did blue and green. And then upstairs is also red and purple. So I thought it looks, it looks really cool. I mean, they're like really vivid, bright, kind of uh, really interesting uh, colors here that really make it, it kind of gives it that arcade feel, you know? And I just wish that it would kind of stay that way. So, you know, I mean, of course, it's not hard to set the colors. And of course, you can do that yourself as well and set it to whatever color you want if you download the lot. But I just kind of wish it would stay that way. But it's that way in the screenshot, so at least you can appreciate it there. And, uh, you know, I took the screenshots for this lot at night, at least on the inside, so you can kind of see the colors better. So yeah, you'll see it looks pretty cool. But anyway, up here on the second level, uh, I'm just putting in some more things. So you just have like the uh, pool table there, the foosball table, some neon lighting, uh, and there's some arcade machines in the back here. I also put some posters on the walls just because, I guess, why not? The walls looked a little empty. But yeah, uh, you know, it's not too over the top here, but it looks pretty cool. And I think it's a really neat lot. Uh, you know, of course, a lot of these community lots that I'm building for the world are you know, lot types I've never made before. So, you know, it's kind of fun to do this. And I've definitely never made an arcade before. I also have some vending machines there, you can see. I'm kind of just putting this little, um, you know, uh, sofa there. So I guess when you're not bowling, you can you know, sit back there. And of course, this is not like a real bowling alley where you actually have like a check-in counter when they give you shoes and like has like a whole kind of like sitting area for when, you know, the people who aren't bowling with like tables and chairs and stuff. Yeah, I know it doesn't look particularly realistic. It doesn't even have a front desk for the arcade, but I mean, it's the Sims. Your Sims just walk in and use it all anyway. So, you know, what does it really matter? It works fine. And I didn't leave enough space to add in all that stuff. You can see it's a pretty small lot. I believe it's like 20 by, no, it's like, I don't know what the size is, but it's pretty small. It's a lot smaller than most lots. But yeah, I also decided to add in some fun details here. So I put in like these vents and these uh, kind of uh, various like bits of uh, ventilation, like tubes that just kind of run across the ceiling that look kind of cool. And there's also a couple bathrooms here. So I'm just doing the upstairs one now. It's the same as the downstairs one. And yeah, so I think that's pretty much going to be it for like the main things. I'm just going to do some detailing. There's not really any landscaping on this lot because there's no dirt or grass. It's pretty much just, um, you know, just just a lot. Uh, but anyway, we're kind of nearing the end here. We're almost uh, at the screenshots, which I hope you stick around for those. Uh, but of course, you can download um, either of these lots. Uh, the links are in the description below as, as are the lot numbers. You can also download the world. Uh, there's an overview plus download video on my channel. You can check that out. And download it from there. There's also a whole playlist of this series uh, on my channel as well. So I encourage you to go check that out if you haven't seen all the episodes yet, or you know if you've been skipping around, you can go back and see some of the older ones. Uh, but yeah, and also I also make uh, Sims house builds uh, for Plymouth Isle and just in general. So you can check those out as well. It's also a playlist for that on my channel. But anyway, I also want to thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing if you've done so. I really appreciate it. It also really helps me out. And yeah, so we're just almost done here. Uh, I just kind of, I'm doing a few more final things, like this kind of weird attic space. I thought that last minute, why not add this in? And I also put some boxes in there that I later remove off camera because they had this weird glitch where they kind of like showed up uh, on the lower level, kind of like through the floor. That was annoying, but Anyway, uh, just almost done here, just doing these final touches. I had some trouble finding those boxes, considering I didn't even end up leaving them in. It's kind of un, you know, unnecessary, but whatever. And yeah, so just doing that here. Dun, 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 dun. 
And yeah, just a little trash chute that serves no purpose, but I thought it was cool because I saw it in Buy the Bugs. I was like, I'll put that in too, why not? And yeah, just re-adding some uh, kind of tiles there. But anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope that you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time.